It's 2024 and there's so many options when it comes to software. You have front-end, you have back-end, you have JavaScript, you have Python, you have C++, C Sharp. Where do we even start? Let me take you back to the start of my developer journey. At this point, I'm 22 years old. I'm a barista in South London making barely minimum wage, if I'm being honest with you. And I know it's time to escape. I don't even have enough money to get a laptop. I don't have a desk and the chair in my room. So I'm sitting in my cheap flat scrolling through Quora on, on my phone, trying to figure out if it's even possible for a barista like me to become a developer. And after just a few minutes, I see the post barista turned developer changed my life around. I go on YouTube and I find this guy called Chris the freelancer who was living in Thailand and making money working remotely. I'm Romanian and I'm not a nerd. So I gotta make sure I don't get some half-ass job. So I'm looking through more Quora posts for a couple of hours, YouTube videos, Medium posts, trying to figure out the best way to make money by developing software. And there's all these videos explaining how Python is the easiest to get started with and bullshit computer science concepts. But what they never explain is that Python is not a visual language. C++ is definitely not a visual language. What is a visual language though? JavaScript. So in literally just a few minutes, I've decided it's time to do it. I get the bus to the CX store. Think of it like a British in-person eBay. And I put all the money I have saved from my shitty job to buy a refurbished MacBook Pro 13 inch from CX. I bring it home and that night I also head to Ikea and I bring back a desk and a chair to study. Only the sound of a car driving past every few minutes can be heard. But there is a barista sitting at his desk, learning, learning, learning. So I learn about DOM manipulation. I learn about events, fetching data. And I start to realize how powerful this language really is. And here I am, seven years later, doing exactly what Chris the freelancer showed me. In less than a week, I'm boarding my one-way plane ticket to Thailand. So how can you do the same thing? What is worth my time? I don't wanna waste my time investing it into something that won't work. I'm gonna give you the brutal, honest truth when it comes to this question. If you are a beginner in coding, you are also a beginner in investing. You're also a beginner in investing into learning. So even though you might look for the best way, the best career, the best language, stop worrying about what's gonna happen in one year from now or two years from now. Start worrying about today, the first step, which is actually choosing something. I had this uh, colleague, Susie was maybe five, seven years older than me, so she was closer to her 30s. And Susie was kind of poking fun at me for, you know, being a nerd, right, learning code. Susie is still a barista, right? I'm about to turn 30 and she was seven years older than me, so she's 37 and she's still a barista. So she still invested her time. Unfortunately, the way she invested her time didn't yield any results, unless she loves being a barista, but I highly doubt it. The way I want you to think about it is, no matter what path you take, and I'm gonna tell you what path you take in just a second, you need to think about all the things that you'll be learning, like a bunch of seeds that you are planting. You're taking this seed, you're putting it here. You're putting this seed here, this seed here, this seed here, right? And your job, really, is to make sure that you give enough water to each seed, to make sure that that seed is gonna grow roots, and then at some point, some flower or some plant is gonna come out of that seed. You cannot control the weather. You can control maybe the soil fertility, right? So the information that you are getting and the people that you are surrounding yourself with. If everyone around you is super negative, like in this whole web development space right now, you will not want to go out there on the crops and actually put the water. The weather is not gonna be in your favor, right? There are farmers out there who have a killer year where they make a lot of bank and then some, sometimes you have a drought. Sometimes there's too much rain and there are too many clouds and the, you have a, an unproductive season. A lot of people have been thinking about learning code for years and they never acted on it. They never took opportunity when the season was good, when the season was so-so. Seasons are bad, seasons are good. That's something that you cannot control. The only thing that you can control is to do your part, which is to plant the seeds, to make sure that you put the fertilizer on the soil and water it. Now, there are two ways to actually get into software development. There is the geek way. The geek way means learning Python, Java, all these non-visual languages, that's how I call them. You are better off going to university four years, getting some sort of internship, 
because those uh, languages are so abstract they don't make any sense for a regular person like me and you way i recommend you to take is to go with javascript and i do have a mentorship program and i'll tell you why you should choose javascript well the first reason is because javascript is a visual language right so if you're like most people you want to write something and then see some sort of output you don't want to look at codified outputs and black and white text you don't want to mess around with that stuff right you want to write something and you want to see the output because when you do that you get a quick feedback loop besides having this option of getting this feedback loop so you can learn faster besides this quick feedback loop you'll find practical applications for the code you are writing meaning let's say you have a problem in your real life like counting calories yeah you can use my fitness pal but you can also build a quick application that will allow you to calculate the calories for each meal and so on and so forth. Then you can see a total breakdown. So then once you do that, then you see another problem and another problem and another problem. You can get a job as a front-end developer. You can freelance as a front-end developer. You can build websites and web applications for other people. And then you can also build your own product from scratch because JavaScript is not a language that only runs in the browser. JavaScript allows you to create servers, right? And now you can create a full product Imagine this, you are working as an accountant and there is something that really annoys you about the software that you're using. Well, once you become really good at this, you can actually solve that problem and then sell it to a bunch of companies because if you are annoyed by something, trust me, there is someone else that is annoyed by the same thing. And now suddenly you've learned JavaScript, you have a job and now you are building this side thing that's gonna probably, I don't know, make you millionaire. If you learn a backend only language like Python, well, you'll have to fork out the cash to pay someone to build the front end, right? So, no matter how you put it, you still need a front end, you need a client application, something that the, a, a user can interact with, and you either learn it again and you spend more time learning that, or you pay someone to do it. On top of that, you can also build mobile applications, native applications, right, that run on Windows, that run on Mac, that run on Linux. JavaScript gives you this flexibility so choose javascript i make this decision for you i don't care if anyone is going to call me a sellout or whatever you need to do the work there is no way around it build several small applications that will teach you the basic concepts so you can actually think as a programmer and once you get good enough you should work on an application for several months just so you can get a bunch of exposure because exposure gets you experience in my mentorship program we have this huge application that my students are developing for months now and we are putting that as experience in their resume so then they can say they have one two or three years of experience depending on how bold they are understand that there are no rules to the game okay i feel like a lot of people limit themselves they think oh it's hard so i'm gonna act like it's hard the most annoying part about getting a job is applying to these jobs so i'm paying freelancers to apply for them right there are three freelancers for two guys i'm testing this out right now and each freelancer will send 100 to 200 resumes per week a regular person would never even think about that one of those three freelancers is gonna a b test another resume so two freelancers will send one resume and another freelancer is gonna send another resume in this way you can see which one is best and then you can optimize it if this one wins all the time then you make another resume and then you a b test again until you find one that gets you more results that's how you have to think about this like a business like an investor an investor always tries different ways it doesn't read just the news it has inside sources it has people that know things right if you take the mainstream advice of just make an Airbnb clone or something like that. If you saw any of my reviews here on YouTube, I highly encourage you to say it. Most people that want to make a career change have no clue what to do. And they're just wasting two, three, four, five years. Choose a language, get good at it, build a solid application, a real product that solves a real problem, then try to think of ways to get in, to get an interview. This is how I do it in my mentorship program. And if you want to be a part of it, I highly recommend you to at least apply to see what's in there for you. And you can actually see the entire mentorship by clicking on the second link in the description. You can see our community. You can see some free courses in there. And if you just take action on the free courses, you'll be making leaps of progress 
compared with most people. And you can see our live call recordings. If you are stuck with something, you can look at the live call recordings and there is someone that had the same problem as you and you can see how I explain to them how everything works. And you learn faster just by watching my free stuff, by clicking on the second link in the description. Then you can see our interview prep calls that we run every week. Most people never had an interview call. It's a different way of doing things. If you wanna do it the right way, apply for my mentorship program. If you wanna do it the wrong way, keep watching YouTube. Peace out.